Welcome back, everybody. We are back for more. It's another Perry's Inside Scoop with Orange Head football coach Dino Babers. The Cuse 1-0 and back on the road again this weekend, taking on Maryland in College Park Saturday at noon. So uh, all good things there, Coach, to uh, open the season. And uh, it, we talk about how rare it is to open on the road, let alone two weeks in a row. We'll get into this Maryland matchup first, but uh, how about a, a couple of final points on a road shutout? First time that's happened here since 1991, and, and that's how you open the season. Well, fantastic job by the defense. Coach Ward and the defensive coaches. Uh, anytime you can get a shutout and then you get negative yards rushing in a college football game nowadays, it's unbelievable. And uh, kudos to those guys. I thought we were really, really solid in the uh, special teams except for the one turnover that we had during the game. Uh, I felt that the run game eventually got going, which was good to see. And then we still need to work on some things on the throwing game, but uh, that's what practice is for. Josh Black uh, in on a couple of sacks on a fumble recovery as well. He's the ACC Defensive Lineman of the Week, but it could have been Kendall Coleman. Certainly could have been Alton Robinson. Uh, that was a very disruptive group. You know, all the tackle for losses, when you get a negative rushing yards, is because those sacks are taken off of rushing. Mm -hmm. And it's still an amazing uh, statistic for what those guys did. The effort. If you go back and watch the effort of that defense and you know, Lakeem Williams, some of the plays he made, uh, uh, Armstrong, it, was, it really was a complete effort. So those guys have to have a lot of confidence. And it's not a fluke, I guess. If Andre Sisco got seven picks last year, he picks up another one in his opening game of his sophomore year. Uh, certainly, Ify Malafonwu, a guy that you know has excellent ball skills, seems like that defense, at least in game one, uh, was as disruptive as advertised. When you get that kind of effort and you hold a team to negative yards rushing and then you throw on a turnover by Sisco, uh, Ify's, Ify's interception was a fantastic uh, ball handling catch. I mean, that was a very, very difficult catch. And then you think about the play that Trill Williams made on the six-yard line when he's running behind the guy. He could just tackle him, but they're taught to rip the ball out, and he rips that ball out. And I want to say Josh jumped on it. I'm not sure who jumped on that yes. one. It was Josh. Mm -hmm. But to, come, to hold that, sh that shutout was just an amazing, amazing feat. And then I, I want to say this. When the fourth quarter rolled around, you know, you had a lot of twos and threes out there, and those guys crossed the 50. And to watch the twos and threes battle to keep that goose egg on the scoreboard uh, and to watch the ones cheer for those guys in their effort, uh, there was no greater moment as a coach. I'm so proud of the defensive effort and the defensive coaches, and they deserve all the kudos they're getting for yeah, it. Yeah, so 24-nothing obviously didn't light up the scoreboard, but Liberty did have that one legit scoring chance. You set a turnover uh, deep in the red zone, and you guys had one that I'm sure is a teaching moment is an interception uh, forced by Tommy DeVito at the end of the first half. Oh, absolutely. You know, when you've got a field goal kicker like we have, those are automatic points on the board. We want to be careful with the football. That stuff is going to happen. Like I said, first start, there's going to be growing pains. He understands when he let it go, he wish he had it back. I believe the ball was tipped also. But that stuff happens. Those guys are allowed to jump and try to tip some balls. He'll do a better job with that, and we'll get much better than that as the year goes along. I'm sure we'll talk throughout the season about the growth of Tommy DeVito and maybe the next season and the season after that, for that matter. When a guy comes back after that game, it's a win on the road and your first start. How do you deal with him uh, this week in terms of getting him ready for a major conference opponent? You know, I think the big thing is this. Quarterbacks are judged by wins, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, right now he's 1-0 as a starting quarterback. The last time I checked, that's perfect. And if we can keep that record going, I think we're going to be really happy with everything that he does here for however long he decides to do it. Sure. Were you pleased uh, with, first of all, you had to shuffle a little bit of an adjustment on the offensive line, right? Sam Hackle goes down, so Aaron Service, you're able to pop right back in at center where he had been. And the ground game, regardless of, of back, seemed to be effective. You know, the offensive line's been juggled a lot anyway, so for, for Sammy to go down, we hope he gets better, and then for, uh, for Service to go back there, the other lineman went, eh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then the other guys went in at the positions that they've been at, and then they started executing. They've all touched a lot of positions. We've tried to build a lot of depth with that front five. I think we've done that. Now it's time for those guys to settle down in position so they can start to jail for the opponents that we have coming up. And, uh, you know, I think they will do a good job with it. When it comes to the running game, uh, all those guys went in, the, the top three guys, they all contribute a lot. 
you know, we're not trying to do it running back by committee, but when you're tired, come out and let the other guy go in. Let's stay fresh so that we can be unselfish and win football games. And that's what I'm proud about with those three guys is they don't care who gets the credit, but they do care whether we win or lose, and that's, that's all right with me. Sure. What was the biggest agenda item for you this week in practice in terms of whether it was corrective or cleaning up something you saw Saturday or getting ready for Maryland? It was really both. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be, it was a fantastic question. Uh, we don't meet on we meet on Sundays. We don't practice on Sundays. We don't meet on I mean on Mondays. Okay, so Tuesday we went in. We did a, a bunch of corrections and pre-practice from the game because that's for the growth. We talk about the growth from game one to two. You have to go correct yourself. And then the second part of the t the second part of that practice was for Maryland. And uh, there's no doubt that we want to you know put our best foot forward there. But if you don't make the corrections now, early in the season, on the mistakes that you make, you'll look up game six and seven, and you're still doing the same old thing. And I think there's a word for that, <laughs> uh, insanity. But uh, we want it to be different. We want to get better. We have to go back and correct. You said early in the week that you don't anticipate having a defensive tackle, McKinley Williams, available yet for this game. What about Heckle? And I think that was the only significant injury in, in the first game. You know, we're going to have to see about Heckle, Heckle right now. I would say 50-50. Okay. So Maryland while you're winning 24 nothing, says, check this out, they win 79 to nothing. You put the film on and it says what? It says they won a whole bunch to a little bit. <laughs> they won a whole bunch to a little bit. I could have told you that bit. without the film. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were very explosive. Their uh, skilled players were a lot better than the other team's skilled players. Uh, the quarterback executed at a very high level. Their speed was different than the speed of the opponent they were playing. It was a, a huge mismatch. But all that being said, the defense did what they were supposed to do. They got a shutout. The offense did more than what they should have done. They scored 79 points. And had to gear down, I'm sure. And had to gear down uh, in the fourth quarter. And you're sitting there going, wow. You know, by a little bit after halftime, all the starters were out. And you still have to watch the twos and the threes. I've seen a lot of their players now. I know they're almost their entire team mm -hmm. after watching that game. But uh, it was a, a great effort, and it was a great outing by them. And uh, there's no reason why. Uh, there's, I can understand why they're favored after something like that. They came out of the shoots very, very effectively, and they looked very cohesive as a unit. Okay, lastly here, uh, three true road wins last year. Uh, opened with one here. You've got another opportunity. Well, what's it take when you pack up the troops and, and come on a trip like this to take care of business? You know, the biggest thing is you have to be physical. You have to take care of the football. And I'm going to hit you with something that is going to sound a little different to you. And you have to be unselfish. You know, there's certain times where you've got to do certain things in the game and, and one player A, B, or C may not be happy but they've got to understand that we're doing it for the good of the family, the La Familia and the Ohana, because we're doing the things that we need to do to win, in our opinion. And hopefully it works out in our favor. Okay. All right. I'm going to hit you with one, okay? Our last word today is the Perry's fan question of the week. And this one comes in from Renee in Cortland. And Renee says, what, what was up with the sideline push-ups, Coach, in the Liberty game? The sideline push-ups. We have, we have a deal in, on our football field that, uh, I mean, on our football team that, Unless the ball is bowled to you, okay, and it touches your hands, you have to do 10 push-ups if you don't catch it. The easiest thing to do in the world is throw a football. The easiest thing in the world to do is catch a football. It's easy. Everybody can do it. So, uh, you know, the ball, the ball technically didn't touch my hands, but I did go up to catch the football, and then I decided that I was not going to catch the football, and I got called out by a rhino, Chris Elmore. Uh -huh. Coach, you owe us 10, and uh, I'm family. He called me. I dropped and gave him 10 because I'm sure I'm going to get an opportunity to get him back. Sure. Well, you walk the walk <laughs> because it's all, uh, on a serious note, it's all part of team building, right? Uh, you don't ask the, the players to do anything you're not willing to do. Absolutely true. All right. Good, good stuff. Appreciate the question there from Renee and Cortland, and I uh, hope to use many more of those on a weekly basis here. Did you know Perry's now delivers ice cream? How cool is that? You can get more information at perrysicecream.com.